Um, anything different that you've seen through tape or Dean Thomas seen through tape uh, with Sarah Fanta? Is there something that, you know, okay, we're going to, you know, we're going to get her on the ground. We're going to submit her in the first. Is there something that you've seen? Like, of course, I don't want you to give your game plan right now on Fight Bananas, but um, how confident are you going into UFC 240? Uh, no matter what, my game plan is always the same. Like every girl can expect the same. I'm going to find my way to your throat no matter what. Like that's my goal, my destination, and I have a million ways to get there. So no matter what, I'm going to get there. That's awesome. Um, you kind of mentioned it, you, how you train all the time. Uh, I had Jose Shorty Torres on last week and he mentioned, he goes, it's so funny. Uh, I'm, you know, messing around with Jillian tonight. She's going to, you know, submit me and choke me out all night long. And it was just crazy to hear how many great fighters are in that camp. Uh, that's what Jose Torres talked about a lot, was just Eric Shelton there for him, Yuan Porta is there for him, Titan FC, flyweight champ. How is it at American Top Team night in, night out? Oh, it's absolutely insane. Like our girls team, there's no, there is no girls team that can compare to the one at American Top Team. Like Amanda Nunes, Nina Antaroff, Yano, Jacek, uh, Mara Romero Barella. Uh, just to name a few, you know, it's like we have Kayla Harrison, probably, Kayla Harrison. Yeah, we have a, a girls team, probably about like 15 girls who are title contenders within the next couple of years. Yeah, it's insane. And talking about title contenders, uh, I know American Top Team was really cool. A video came out a couple of days ago when Jorge got back into the gym and everyone was going crazy. Uh, Amanda's knockout of Holly Holm, like every... 10 different predictions. How Amanda's going to win, knock out, ground and pound. I don't think a lot of people said Amanda's going to win via head kick. Uh, how is the momentum right now down there at Coconut Creek with Amanda's and Jorge's just past uh, performances? Uh, both of them were absolutely amazing. Uh, Jorge with a five second knockout, fastest in UFC history. And then uh, Amanda is obviously a monster, but with a head kick against Holly Holm is like the next level, you know? Yeah. Um, She's always something to look up to, and it uh, really drives you. Um, I really hope I bring that killer in instinct into this next fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the debate is over, right? Amanda Nunes, greatest female fighter of all time. There's just no debate anymore. A hundred percent. There is no debate at all. And I, like, it's really just, it's incredible the things that she can do. <laughs> yeah. And you've, you've been on a couple times, and I remember... The first time was right before Amanda fighting Cyborg. And we're like, guys, if she defeats Cyborg, you know, you can really call her the greatest of all time. And then, you know, butter, knife, we, we know that story. And then the Holly Holm fought, uh, the fight was going to happen. I was like, guys, she's the greatest ever. And I think uh, I heard it. I think it was DC that talked about it. We have to stop calling her the greatest female fighter ever and start giving her, I think, a little bit more respect on just one of the greatest fighters of all time. What she's doing and her competition and how she's going through them. I just I'm so impressed with Amanda Nunes every single fight, especially like if she goes like her next step. She was talking about she wants to defend the 45 pound belt. If she goes back and she does that, she'll be the first fighter ever to defend both their belts yeah. in both weight classes. So it's like I feel like that's definitely brings her into the conversation of best fighter ever. Oh, for sure. And do you have a preference or do you have an idea who, you know, at 145, uh, GDR just, you know, right through Aspen Ladd within a minute at UFC Sacramento. Is it the winner for sure at UFC 240? Is it a cyborg rematch or Felicia Spencer from the jungle right here in Orlando, Florida, another Florida fighter and another fighter from K You guys have a lot of connection, you and Felicia Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I keep on, people keep on asking me my prediction on that fight, and I'm like, I have to go with Felicia just because we're both Canadians living in Florida. I like, know, we that's got in common. <laughs> definitely. And both you guys are very personal, uh, very easy to talk to. We talk to Felicia all the time on this show as well. She's just awesome. I'm actually going to see her Friday. Uh, it's like right before she's flying off to Canada. So she's just, she's so excited. Um, Two years ago, the first time I saw Felicia at the jungle and the first kind of interview conversation we had, she's like, you know, my goal one day, I think I'm going to fight Cyborg in the UFC. Like that was her goal. That was when she was in. She wasn't even the Invicta FC champion yet. And for that to come to fruition and we think it's for the number one contendership, I think there's no doubt it's Felicia or Cyborg versus Amanda next, I believe. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. I feel like the 45 division is so thinned out. There's not a lot of girls yeah. in it. So it's like. I really, it's like, who else, really? 
For sure, for sure. Um, last kind of question with American Top Team. Um, and like I said, we talked to Jose, uh, you know, Din. Uh, he always talks about how, you know, you guys have such a great relationship, uh, such a great, uh, you know, a bond that can't be broken with a coach and a student. How is it to, I've never really asked this question, uh, how is it to train with men? And how is it to train with females? Is it different? Do you like, you know, Jose Torres is probably a little bit stronger than some of the girls. Do you like training with uh, more than men or just, doesn't matter whatever gets my skills to the best of my ability um i think it's important to train with both okay. i feel like uh guys tend to be obviously like you said a little bit stronger a little bit uh, more explosive faster and uh it gives me more of a challenge a cardio push you know going with guys more than anything but girls just move different like there's sometimes like i'll put a girl in a position and i'm like how have you not tapped yet like you're still like girls are just flexible as anything a foot will come out of nowhere and be on your hip and you're like where did that come from like gr girls are just different to move with so it's like it's definitely something I have to get I feel like it's almost more beneficial for me to go with guys but you have to get used to girls too just because of how they move oh absolutely I, I'm happily married and sometimes I wake up in the morning and my wife's foot is in my face and it's like <laughs> How do we wood blankets like how does that happen you're so right on the whole foot thing I, I totally am aware of that um we you know i brought up evicta fc there's actually a big show uh megan collie's fighting on there she's from the jungle she's a good friend of felicia and dana white contender series we just had hannah Golda uh goldie fight on that card who's fought you from island fights i saw a picture with you in combat night so all these kind of coming together my question is do you think there's a great brew uh blueprint uh, you know, fighting, you know, a couple regional scenes, trying to get on maybe the ultimate fighter or now to me, the ultimate fighter has become the Dana White contender series or everyone's different. You know, Felicia Spencer never fought for the contender series and never fought for the ultimate fighter, you know, kicked ass regional, went to Invecta, kicked ass there, two, three wins there. And now she's there. You know, what's your preference or what's your landscape, your idea on how females can get through and to the UFC where you're at now? Uh, I just say keep taking fights, keep going. Like, I don't necessarily have the best record. Uh, like even when I was getting signed to the UFC, I was three and two, but I took fights and I was active and I kept on getting wins and just kept on staying in their face. You know, like just keep taking fights and take all those hard fights. Like even if it's a hard matchup, take it. That's the way you're going to test yourself. And even though I was three and two, obviously I could still, I can hang at UFC level now because I did take those hard fights. I made myself ready for it. Oh, for sure. And they love that. If they know if you're taking a hard fight, uh, they're going to kind of not throw you one. I don't want to say that, but like they they want to, you know, give you a good fight or a fight that you think is a good matchup for you. And the UFC loves calling and you saying, yes, they just, that's, yeah. the, that's the UFC for sure. Um, man, I'm so excited for UFC 240, 10 days away. Wow. So pumped. Uh, anything else, you know, anything, um, you know, that's coming lately and tra training camp's good. Weight's good. You're, you're feeling good mentally, physically. Oh, yeah. Uh, training camp's been perfect. Like I said, it's been a really long training camp for me, so I've had tons of time to think about the fight. And um, I've actually been lower this on my weight this camp than I ever have before, so I haven't even thought about my weight cut, really. Like, I was eating ice cream last weekend, so like, usually I, I'm having to stop things like that like a month out at least. But um, I've been eating fairly clean, but like I said, I can still kind of mess up a little bit. My weight's been so light this camp. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, do you have like a really cool, funny locker room story or like American top team story or a story that uh, you at one of the UFCs that it's a Jillian Robertson story. It's a savage story. Only, you know, it and you can kind of tell our audience here at Fight Bananas. Uh, I don't know. You put me on the spot here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. And like just a kind of like my little story with me uh, you know we went down to american top team probably around it was around two months ago we're gonna get back there soon it's so funny i talked to billy Patton, uh, so maybe in the next week or two pro i'm hoping you're back from canada so we can hang and uh talk about your win um but it's just so crazy some of the we saw andre arlovsky and mm. he's working out you know he, he's hitting iron and all of a sudden he puts on one of those weights around your head you know and yeah. he's running through the gym with the weight around his head so it was, it was someone like you want Porta or it was, it was a flyweight, uh, Eric Shelton. It was someone really small and they're racing Andre Arlovsky, a heavyweight with a weight around his head. And Andre Arlovsky is like beating them. They're so close. It's just so funny to see the, uh, the good competition, the goodwill there at American top team. And just to see like the bond that different fighters have that 
you know, I would never think of Andre Arlovsky and Eric Shelton together, but it's just so cool seeing that behind the scenes look, if I can say, you know? Oh yeah. hundred percent. And, uh, I feel like, like you said, it's just, it's a different dynamic when you're in the gym, you know, yeah. everybody fighters have to be all aggressive and all mean, but really it's like the second they step off the mat, they're usually the sweetest person in the world. When you're on the mat, it can be a little bit different, but the second you step off, it's like, there's no ego there. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Well, I, we always appreciate your time. Um, yeah, about to fly off to Canada 10 days away. We really appreciate it. Uh, the floor is yours. Any kind of sponsors or any kind of, you know, um, Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, any kind of, you know, names you want to throw out there? Floor is yours. Just want to say thank you to my sponsors, Creating Better Days CBD, uh, FTWR brand, where you can get your Savage shirts and uh, Chef at Meal Plans. And then, of course, follow me at Savage underscore UFC on Instagram and Twitter. Okay. Oh, last question is, after this win at UFC 240, um, we, we need to, I want to get you in a big time uh, super fight, like one of those jiu-jitsu fights. Remember the last time we talked about it, it was Jorge and Showtime Pettis. That event went so well there in Pensacola. I definitely think a big uh, savage super fight is in the cards for you in the future. Would you like that? Oh, I'm 100% down. I'm. Uh, I think I already have like two or three scheduled after this fight. That I'm oh, already do you? looking forward to. Yeah, I'm trying to stay busy no matter what. So uh, if somebody's messaging me that they're offering either jujitsu or combat jujitsu, I'm down for it. Yeah, and did, I think you rolled with my girl Jada down there in Miami a week or two ago. Is that right? Oh yeah, I did at uh, MIA Rollers. Yeah. No, oh, she's awesome. She's she's been, uh, you know, on the show as well. She's a big fan, but uh, awesome. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Like always get that.